what is the best material for 3D printing? Okay, so these are some common materials that you're gonna find for 3D printing. Not these two, these guys are aluminum. So this is a PLA, these, these are ABSs, this is PTG, polycarbonate, and then nylon. These are standard base materials. These ones are carbon fiber uh, add, uh, added into the filament, and these ones are glass fiber added into the material into the material. So when you're looking at 3D, one of your biggest questions is gonna be what type of plastic should I use? And so today I'm gonna to go over the different properties of these plastics, as well as some strength tests on all these, and we will be breaking every single one of these. Okay, so these are some of the different filaments here. So I have all the filaments here on the left, and then I have some important properties that you would care about um, listed here. And I have the ones highlighted in green that don't suck for that specific category. Um, so material, the, the top one PLA, like I mentioned, that's worthless, pretty much PTG, ABS, polycarbonate, carbon, um, nylons, all those are going to be pretty good as far as your glass transition temperature goes. And therefore I didn't bother highlighting, but your, um, heat deflection temperature, melting temperature. And then I put in print temperature here, even though that's, it, it just, it gives you a general idea of where it melts for some of the plastics that are, um, quote unquote, amorphous. So don't have a specific uh, melting point. Um, and then I have this elongation at break. break. So th that's kind of a, a general uh, how flexible is this before it breaks. So those are all pretty good. And then I have the impact strength here. So the tricky part with uh, picking a filament is you're looking at something that has a lot of good properties, but the tricky part is you're going to start trading off uh, it, it's really a trade-off. There's no material that's perfect in every single category. But you start to see a pattern here that the polycarbonates and the nylons are all really quite good in a lot of things as far as their, their overall strength, their impact resistance goes, um, and everything. Especially the the glass fiber and then the regular the regular material and you notice that the carbon fiber gives you increased tensile strength above and beyond what the glass fiber does but you sacrifice a lot of the impact it essentially makes it a little bit more brittle so you gain a lot of strength but you lose it it becomes more brittle um, whereas the glass fiber what it does is it gives you not quite as much strength but it also increases the impact uh, resistance off of the base material in most cases or at least doesn't make it worse so that's why this glass fiber nylon this is what your um, when you get a polymer lower or a polymer on a firearm it's going to be made out of some variant of a glass fiber infused nylon um, plastic okay so all of these filaments um, they're uh, they're printed and they are not annealed. So when you anneal a filament, it means you you essentially bake it uh, right around the glass transition temperature, so that the layers it helps with the with the z axis uh, adhesion. So all these are just printed as is. Also, I haven't really tuned honed in a lot of my settings on these filaments i was using just stock profiles and some of them um like so like this one this abs one you can't really blame that that was just i didn't uh fix a lot of the supports so that isn't really a profile issue that's me not setting up the slicer properly but you can see on like my polycarbonate one it's kind of stringy and even this uh this is a ptg one it's a little bit stringy a lot of these could be fixed um with fine tuning your printer settings um the other thing is all of these are done, I do believe with 98% infill. All these are pretty much completely solid where normally you have some sort of infill and it's relatively hollow. So I think one of the weakest spots is gonna be the buffer tube. So that's what we're gonna test on every single one of them. I have a crane scale over here, um, a Chinesium one, but it should be pretty good. And we're gonna break every single one of these to see on this weakest point, when, at what point is that gonna break? Now, when I got this crane scale, I got it for some other stuff. So it's rated to a thousand pounds. And because of that, uh, for the increase measurement range, I sacrificed a little bit of the resolution, which means my increments are only in half pound increments. So to test these, I'm gonna put the lower right here, make sure it's zeroed for the weight of the lower, and then I'm just gonna pull 
straight down and that should give us the weakest um, point of this until it breaks. And I'll pull down slowly so we can see the crane scale update as we go. So here we go. Here's PLA. Oh, gosh. Oh, the most I saw there was 74 pounds. Honestly, that is a heck of a load more than what I was thinking for PLA, but hey, I'll give it to it. That's, that's impressive. Standard PTG. Oh, wow. Carbon fiber PTG. Glass fiber PTG. Oh, saw 75 and a half on that one. That one moves into first place. ABS. You know, this ABS printed out, turned out freaking good. Miss it. Oh. Carbon fiber ABS. Glass fiber ABS. Polycarbonate. This is a carbon fiber polycarbonate. I forgot to update it. Okay, here's nylon. Expecting great things. 68 and a half. There's a carbon fiber nylon. That one must not print it well because she just busted and I don't have a good way to repeat that test. So we're just gonna know that one. Okay, here's a glass fiber nylon. So what's interesting on the nylon too is only one side broke and the other side is still relatively connected and you can see how flexible nylon is, how uh, not brittle it is. Okay guys, so these are the overall test results. Honestly, shockingly, PLA, the Z adhesion was impressively good. Um, in fact, a lot of people recommend that you print stuff like this out of PLA plus because PLA plus is actually relatively impressive. The drawback to using, well, PLA is also super easy to print with. The problem is, is that it is, it has, it is really poor at, at temperature and uh, firearms get hot. So that's a problem. Now this isn't a perfectly representative test because there's 10 thousand settings with a 3d printer that you can adjust so i'm honestly going to leave it up to you with what type of filament you go with now at the end of the day firearm polymer parts are planet print are out of a glass fiber nylon and so obviously that's a great place to start and it has really good properties now it didn't have quite as good z-axis um, adhesion as some of the other materials that I tested, but it was still really good. It was, okay guys, I hope this is useful. I will be 3D printing some of these lowers, uh, not these ones, ones that are specifically designed for 3D printing. And I can't tell you how, I can't tell you where to get files. I can't tell you how to put it together. I can't tell you, give you links to websites. I can't do any of that because YouTube, the YouTube overlords get mad at me. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Really appreciate it. Don't really ask for that very often. Um, but if you can do that, that'd be great. You can help by doing that. Again, follow YouTube guidelines and to the YouTube overlords. I did not show anybody how to 3D print firearm parts or how to manufacture firearm parts. This honestly could have been a 3D printing video exclusively on the material properties of specific filaments. Um, there's nothing other than, you know, in the context of being a firearms channel, uh, there's nothing specific on how to manufacture firearms in this video. Anyway, okay, guys, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, jokes, insults, please put in the comment section below. As always, guys, see you on the next one. Ugh. I really like 165. I didn't quite get it.